Hello, Samir. Hey, Yi, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. Um, I didn't have any agenda from a project management perspective. I'm looking at what you have added. Let me ping if uh, Milan or anybody else has anything on the agenda they are adding. Oh, Milan is here, okay. Yeah, I'm looking at the agenda. Hey, folks. Hi, Emilia and Samir. Hey, Kevin. All right. Uh, if you're not waiting on anybody else, I think we can start. I don't have anything specific to bring up. Uh, I'll have something ready by Thursday on release content for RC1. Uh, things that uh, I think needs to be there, but for this call, I don't have any any items. So I'll let whoever has the agenda to go first. Shiva, you wanna go first? You have an item here, security issue. I, yeah, I think that issue is uh, uh, added by me. Actually it is, uh, it was found by Shui. I tried to put a link here, but I, I feared. Uh, let me share it into into the chat area. And probably I also need to share the screen just a moment. These are the verification steps, okay? Uh, let me share my screen. Shui, yeah. uh, are you there? Uh, actually, uh, can you see my screen? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Shui mentioned that during this, uh, uh, is this correct? Page? Uh, uh, I'm not sure. Uh, it's not in this talk. Uh, it's in the trust the trust policy. Okay, sorry. Uh, then I needed to find, uh, find another one. This one, trust the store, trust policy. Uh, yes. <laughs> uh, this one it is about the validate uh, integrity firstly and then validate the authenticity later um uh, sure i think that uh, if we uh, use uh, um, uh, authenticated public key uh, during when dating the integrity. So this key could be, could be uh, matched uh, by some bad uh, actor. So which could lead this step, uh, uh, for example, a binary crash, some issue here. So we can get in the detail. Uh, so here, uh, okay. So uh, in the uh, validation process, uh, you can, as you can see, we validate the signature first, then we validate if the public key and its certificates are valid or not. So uh, there's a problem that is when we validate the signature, we find that we are using an untrusted public key. Uh, usually it does not matter because uh, if we use an untrusted public key, uh, the worst case is that uh, the signature verification succeeded, but it will fail in the, uh, in the validation of the authenticity. Uh, however, there's a case that depends on the implementation that if we use a uh, bad or malicious public key in the step three, uh, then the um, uh, the program may crash if 
the public key is in, uh, is, is, is maliciously crafted. It purely depends on the, uh, it, the implementation. Uh, for Golang building library, uh, it's okay uh, because uh, it checks the, the form of the public key when we pass it. Uh, but I'm not sure if other implementations like C Sharp or Java or Python does it or not. Uh, if that implementation does not do uh, the right uh, check, then uh, it will be problematic because it affects the availability. Uh, we, we don't want anything uh, panic or throw uh, uh, exception or uh, others. I mean, unhandable uh, okay. exception, something like that, or, or segmentation fault in the step three. So it's it's basically denial of service, right? Yes. Okay. So I think that is interesting, but I'm I'm trying to think how to apply that because you're you're talking about parsing or using public keys which are passed to crypto libraries and them not being able to handle a particular kind of maliciously crafted key, right? You, you have that particular threat actually throughout this process, right? Not just limited to this step. Like in the, in the certificate, uh, like in the next step, authenticity, where we load up the trust stores uh, we load up DAR formatted ASN, etc. Uh, we look at uh, uh, what do you say, subject, uh, certificate subject, RDN parsing, and all of those stuff. Like, I, I, I'm trying to classify this. Like, wherever we are dealing with specific uh, formats and parsing of formats or encoding, et cetera, we have this general threat, right? I'm trying to evaluate like, if, if we switch it up, you may have the same issue with the authenticity step where some steps maliciously crafted certificate, certificate content, ASN1, uh, et cetera, no, may cause it to fail. Yeah, the threat is there if we uh, verify them from bottom to up top, but if we verify them from top to bottom, then it's okay. For example, uh, uh, the CA the rooster are in the trust store and uh, because in the, in the trust store, we trust it. So yep. we're pretty sure it's okay. Then we use this, uh, the CA the root search to verify the intermediate search. Then it's still okay because we trust the rooster, so we trust the intermediate search. And then we use the intermediate search to verify the leaf search. Everything's fine. Nothing is bad. Uh, everything, all the public keys are trusted, and uh, we are. We think it's good. They are good because we trust, we trust them. No, I think what I mean to say is uh, the so, denial of service due to library crashing or a particular dependency crashing that still exists, right? Even if we change up the uh, yes, ordering. Yes, my point is we cannot. Yes, uh, uh, the. Uh, the implementation is, uh, uh, yes, we need the, the, the implementation, that's just leverage should, should be cracked. But uh, theoretically, from the spec, we should make sure that everything is right. We cannot rely on the implementation to ensure the security. Yeah, I think I, I get the general point around, we could validate the certificate or identity authenticate the identity and then use the identity key to validate the integrity. Um, I'll have to go through this flow and see, I don't think it affects anything to change that order. We kind of explicitly call that out, but there are other places in the spec, um, let me see, where I think in the same spec, I have a comment which says ordering doesn't matter, but all of those steps need to be completed. So I'm not sure if that recommendation should also change then. I guess what I mean to say is the way, the way this is put together um, I think it's in the verification plugin spec. 
where it says all of these steps need to be performed, but the ordering doesn't matter. Like the end security value that you'll get for a successful signature verification or a fail should be the same, even if you change the ordering. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm open to hear other feedback, right? Yeah, I was trying to freak. Shiwe, can you go through the scenario that you worried about? Like top to bottom, bottom to top. I didn't understand what the, the hole was. Yeah, yes, because, uh, so, so here, uh, we should use a trust, trusted public key to verify the, the signature and the content. If we yeah. use untrusted, uh, uh, or unauthenticated public key, uh, we may result uh, in something like a process crash. It's okay, so you're, so you, yeah. but well, just hang on a second. So you're basically saying, hey, you have to validate the certificate chain before you check to see if the content has been modified. Yes. Right, but the problem here is the content could still always be in the situation where a truncated um, network request resulted in a corrupted image. So that doesn't preclude us from running into a, a crash or an overflow in the, in the hashing function, right? So validating the signature didn't protect that scenario, did it? Um, no. Uh, I think right. the change in ordering basically right now whatever the failure scenario is with a malicious key, if we change the ordering, it gets changed from a denial of service to a failed signature uh, verification, which is more desirable, or like, which is what you would want in this case. So Correct. The, but you're mandating, they have to do the network traffic potentially first or, or right? If they wanted to do it all locally and before they ever hit a network? By the time we get into this step, all of the information, like here we are evaluating a candidate signature against a local trust store and like the image URL to be, uh, which we are validating, all of that is present at this point. Or oh, the only network call done after this is for a revocation check. Correct. And so the question is, what did we gain by requiring the order that you're arguing is the type of error we're going to get? I think Shiva is saying that uh, right now when we do integrity check, we are doing it based on the signing key, right? right? Like a raw public key. Uh, but ideally, we should trust that key first by doing the certificate chain and identity validation and then do the integrity check. And that, that basically changes some class of denial of service attack. It prevents that and converts that to a signature verification failure if it was a malicious key. Is that correct, Shibay? Uh, yes, uh, basically uh, we want to do step four first, then the step three. But uh, there's a workaround. Uh, if we want to do step three first, then step four, uh, step four uh, then we need to mention that we need to um, uh, add a step three point, uh, add a step before 3.5. That is check that the public key is in a good form. So you're, you're suggesting that we just add extra text, text that you could check the hash, the content integrity first, and if it's invalid, you'd still check the certificate chain to return the, the revoked certificate versus a corrupted, to determine whether it's corrupted or, or compromised signature. Is that basically what you're saying, guys? So if you, if you were to, check the, the integrity of the package by yeah. checking the hash and it comes back as 
is not matching either because it was truncated or it's been maliciously modified. Uh, it's a different thing. Uh, we are talking about the signature payload is not the actual count, assign, assigned content. Correct. But I could argue you can check the hash first of the content. And if that's corrupted, you don't bother doing the signature. You're walking the, the signature certificate chain. But yeah. you're arguing that you would still need to do that to dis disambiguate between the okay, okay. I, I compromised see, certificate versus. I, I see a point. You, you, you are, uh, so, yes, you're right. So, uh, uh, integrity, um, there are two steps. That is, first, we need to, um, uh, to validate if the hash matches or not, right? Mm. Yes. Well, that's. And, that's yeah, I, yes. And next step is to. Uh, verify if the hash uh, matches the uh, matches the signature or not. Right. And you, yeah, just let me think about it. Um, if it's possible or not. Sorry, I missed the conversation in between. It, if you were to try and check the the, the um, integrity of the content and came up with the decision that it was corrupted or it's been compromised. We're recommending that you still have to validate the certificate chain to distinguish between a compromised um, um, versus corrupted piece of content. Uh, wait, wait a second. Um, there's a problem that is uh, the hash of the content is not stored anywhere in the signature. So, um, uh, we cannot verify that if we don't verify the signature. But we can still get the. I don't have to walk the certificate chain and validate it to get the the public key, right? All we're arguing here about here then, Shiwe, is a documentation of how which error path we want you to to highlight if you decide to do it in one order versus another, correct? Shiva, do you, do you have an example of the specific kind of malicious public key? Is it basically the verify call on a particular library? Like an example would be a verify on a, uh, signature format library isn't able to handle particular types of key? That is an example. Um, uh, I don't have a concrete example, but I have this, this concern because I, because I have checked uh, uh, the Golan library. Uh, uh, the Golan library is okay. So uh, for example, if we have a public key, that's the, uh, uh, that's the, the for example, a ECD, a EC key, that's the, uh, the key, point is not in the curve. Uh, uh, Golan will check that when we pass the certificate. So that will ensure that the public key is in a Google form. So this points to like when you're saying. Uh, so for Golan, it's okay if we do step three first. But I'm not sure if it's applied uh, it's, it's pliable to other languages. Well, do we then argue that, hey, here's the set of libraries that we validated and, and walk away from after that? Uh, can you re repeat? Uh, can you repeat your question? I'm arguing, do we handle this by saying, here's the vetted set of software libraries to use to, to validate certificate chains. If you're using your own custom one, then you should refer uh, to this. Meaning, do we have that back? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> no, we don't. I, um, I, can, I, can, I can see the merits of that. This suggestion basically we are saying in step three we are using the public key of the signing certificate but we didn't authenticate the signing certificate we didn't trust the signing certificate so we are basically using an untrusted public key 
to verify the signature. And there is a, there's a, there's a potential gap there in which a malicious reformatted key uh, cannot be processed by a library. So something like, uh, it's, a, it's not like an, the library through an exception. It, uh, like a buffer overflow or something like that, that actually corrupted or crashed the process. Uh, I will, I'll track this. Uh, there is, I think the only concern that I have is validate authenticity interacts with the plugin, uh, the verification plugin. I think even in that case, it, it should be okay. This, this seems like the correct sequence of things in which we establish trust first and then use trusted metadata like the public key to go forward in the verification process. Um, let me create an issue right now and I can assign that to myself. Okay, uh, thank you. Thank you, Mimi. Cool. Thanks. Uh, so I'll be done for the first one. Uh, I think the second one is also heard by me. Yeah, the second one, if we can open that issue. Um... Yes, let me open it. So if we scroll all the way, um, yeah, if you can go to that command. So I, I reviewed this PR later, the change is merged in. My suggestion is that uh, we should revert this change. Basically, if you open that spec link, yeah. Yeah, that one. So what we are talking about is here in the generate signature request, there is a hash algorithm. This is a request contract for the plugin, only for the plugin, not used anywhere else. And in its request contact contract, it says you specify the hash algorithm using these constants. And what's happened is the rest of like notation core go, et cetera, notation core, wherever we are passing SHA or hash algorithm, that's based on whatever values the libraries provide. And that is usually regularly kind of formatted as SHA dash instead of underscore. And that's what is commonly used. So there's a mismatch and then it fails. So the fix, if you go back to the PR, um, like scroll up, look at the changes. This is a fix in notation core go, where it, if you look at the file file changes, scroll up all the way and yeah, file changes. So this updated notation core go itself to change the SHA hash algorithm, it defined the hash algorithm constants. It, it shouldn't be done here. Like, like it's a translation issue. It needs to be converted from one constant SHA dash to SHA underscore. If you want to take that path, it should be done in notation go, not in notation core go. And I think the better way of doing this is just, if you go back to the spec, it's a small spec change uh, to address your concern that the spec change may take time. The spec change is only for this particular field, hash algorithm. We change the constants to more standardly used constants for hashing algorithms, the shard dash. That's what I'm suggesting. I can I can publish the uh, spec by tonight update. Um, we can even go ahead if we agree, we can go ahead and start making changes. But the current fix isn't isn't proper because it it took this plugin defined constant, the plugin layer is not at notation core go, it is at notation go, and we made a change in notation core go. 
Shiva, do you, do you agree? Uh, uh, yes. Uh, so uh, there are two things. Uh, first, uh, yes, you're right. So those constants are, should not be defined in the notation code uh, They should be defined in notation code because it's a translation of the uh, enums uh, to the uh, to the strings. So yeah. uh, to address that, uh, actually we are refactoring the uh, notation code library uh, for the cozy support. So uh, uh, so uh, e can uh, so e, you are sharing the screen, right? Yes. Yes. So can you go to the uh, uh, the the cozy branch of the notation code repo? Cozy branch. Okay. Yeah, or, um, or, or just open that uh, uh, PR uh, in the uh, in the in the notation code uh, library. Uh, let just me go, yeah. just go to the uh, uh, pull request. Pull request. Okay. Yes. Pull request. This one. Y yes. You just click the pull request button. Okay, you mean this? Okay. Yes. Um, it's a little, little slow. You see the progress. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's a little. Maybe uh, refresh the page or do it again. <laughs> oh, it's loading. <laughs> It's too slow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe you can just uh, uh, refresh the page. Yeah. So, so, uh, so basically, uh, when we refactoring the uh, cozy uh, stuffs, uh, I mean, refactoring the code for cozy stuffs, uh, uh, of course, it's in the still in the progress. Um, we are removing all the uh, the string constant uh, from the notation core goal. Yeah, uh, that's the yeah PR uh, twenty six. This one, the first one, yeah. Can you give more detail, then, Shiva? What do you mean by removing string constants? Yeah, yeah, can go to the file changes. And there's a a a, a file called algorithm.go. Yes. Yeah. So. Uh, so uh, before that, as you can see, we uh, we define the enums as uh, string constants. Uh, that's a bind to some uh, strings in the uh, okay. in, uh, in the plug in uh, specification. But now we are removing all of them and just make it a a, uh, a integer uh, enum. Okay, so it's kind of just based on the symbol, based on the enum. Uh, integer based in them, not not yes. string constants. Yes, and then we translate that in the notation Go uh, for the plugins. Okay, so, that, yeah, that makes sense. That sounds better. Do, but uh, do we want to basically the the change which has already been committed that will remain in the alpha three release? Yeah. Yes. Um, uh, so there's a uh, so so basically uh, for the long uh, long run, uh, that's for us dollar one. We are changing that in that way. Uh, but uh, uh, for the alpha dot three, that is we want. To, uh, what uh, shortcut do we want to go? Do we just want I to uh, modify the spec, or uh, we want to just uh, have a walk around? I mean. Uh, let's sure. See. I think the I think the smallest sure. fix, the smallest fix was basically revert that change, and in the plugin, uh, like the Azure KV plugin, you can just use the standard values, like basically yeah, disregard uh, the spec. Yes. Yeah. Then we have another problem here. That's if we change the uh, underscore to hyphen uh, in the spec. Then uh, the values are not in, uh, are not consistent through the whole the, the, the entire spec. So you will see that uh, SHA dash yep. to uh, algorithm names and key spec yeah. names will be different. Uh, and then we have the ISA underscore, and we have always some underscores. 
then it's not that consistent. I, I agree. It's it's a naming it's a naming thing. I kept underscores because it's it's yeah. kind of a. Uh, then we, will that that I, then we will have that inconsistency in our alpha dot three spec. Uh, I'm not sure if it's uh, acceptable or not. Uh, although they will eventually be modified in the RC one. So in the RC one, what yeah, I would, I would. Um, I mean, I would so propose saying, to just keep it, keep it how how it is. I mean, and then we know that we're, we've got fixes. We know we're going to address it. I think the difference in this case was the RSA two zero four eight or the algorithm names. Um, like the hash hash algorithm names are pretty standard, so they're like it didn't seem that it needed to use a different naming format. But I I'm I'm okay with either of those approaches. That's like the char to... char dash two fifty six is kind of like how it is named and used throughout. So there's no need to reinvent that. But the key spec, key and size, or if you scroll down further the signing algorithm that is a set. Yeah, those ones, I think those are fine to be defined by us. That was my intention, but this is again, it's it's, it's naming. Uh, it's also a public contract for plugin developers. So we should kind of consider those things and go with an approach. Uh, uh, to me, uh, all of those names will be changed in the RC1, so it's fine for me. Uh, but there's a problem for the uh, alpha.3. So what, what do we want to publish in the alpha.3? Uh, that, uh, that's we need to make consensus. I think it's- I, Yeah, because we don't want to keep- because we don't want to keep delaying this, right? Because we- it's- I mean, we should not delay, right? We've already- Yeah, the impact back. is- Now we're uh, going on two weeks. Yeah, the impact isn't like there, there isn't any. The only change is from a notation core go library consumer, which in alpha three, we like we'll have breaking changes there. So I think I'm I'm okay with this. If we can, uh, do we even want to open an issue against this, or we'll cover all of this as part of that the cozy PR that you have, Shiva. Is there a need to so open a separate issue? Uh, uh, for cozy support or other things? I think if, uh, if we agree on keeping the naming as is, does yeah. do anybody have objections with keeping the SHA underscore for the hash algorithm names? Uh, e, do we need uh, a issue to check this one? Or, uh, oh, no, I not, think not if, if, yeah, I think if we go for that, so we keep it uh, as it is for, for this uh, spec and we release up three. I would suggest that we, we create a, a new issue to check uh, uh, the naming issue in this plugin spec and we can link to the cozy fix uh, later. If you are fine with the current spec naming throughout, um yeah then there is then there is no need to create then um i don't think there's a need to create a issue we are tracking the uh, I, think I, will, all... uh, I, I mean if we don't need an issue uh, that's also fine because i think the cost will anyway uh, update this uh, plugin extensibility uh, for cost support so we can do do it uh, together. Shiva, is it possible to break the cozy PR? You have the enum updates done first. Uh, yes, we will do that. Okay. okay. So let's do that then first. Yeah. The, yeah. Uh, the, uh, the PR that we just show uh, showed you it just for it's just for showing. <laughs> we we will <laughs> not watch that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So so. So then maybe uh, Shui, you can merge that part you just showed uh, firstly in, into the main branch. Uh, yes, well, we will do that. Uh, so uh, Bingbing, uh, Jingjie, and Zaihao, and uh, Patrick will uh, send separate PRs 
to the uh, to the corresponding repos for update. So uh, those PRs will be ready to be reviewed later in the future. Okay. Okay, that sounds good. I think if we can break that and make the enum yeah. changes as yeah. a separate peer, that would be great. Yeah. Okay. Uh, otherwise, the cozy peer will be super large. It's not really. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thanks. Then I, I think uh, we, we can keep this uh, uh, for upper three and then we uh, go on to release upper three. And the uh, Shui's team will uh, release that uh, uh, fix early. Uh, separate from the COSI and the big PR. Okay, great. Cool. Uh, do we have other agenda items? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I have finished the, my two items. Any others? Uh, if so, no, uh, uh, okay. Meaning you go first. Uh, if you if we if we don't have anything else, I uh, can I ask some question on the plugin spec. Uh, uh, Sure. I I think I, I didn't put any on the agenda. Uh, I was on call last two weeks. I will start looking at open PRs uh, again. I, I know that a bunch got, the smaller ones got progress. Um, the Rakesh submitted a verification plugin PR. That's pretty large. And there is a signing scheme PR from Pritesh. Uh, I made some suggestions. He's addressing those. Uh, other than that, if there are any important PRs, ping them. I'll have a look. I'll have some bandwidth this week. And I think there is one item related to Cozy support. Uh, Shiva, you might have pinged either you or uh, I don't know if Bin Bin pinged me on that some design change for the local signer. There was like a design proposal. I'm going through the notary v2 Slack channel to figure out which, which one that was. Um, maybe notation go. Do you want me to share a minute? Um, Shiva, do you, do you remember, like, I think last week there was some design change related to COSI submitted, I think either as an issue, as uh, a proposal. Okay, because, the, because there was some API differences between JW signer and COSI signer. Uh, let let uh, me. I'll I'll keep searching. You you can. You said you had some questions re regarding verification plugin. We can go through those. Yes. Um. Uh, I I'm lost actually. Uh. So, because I cannot recall what happened last week. <laughs> <laughs> you you mentioned uh, some something you want to discuss uh, in in the plugin extensibility. I think this yeah. spec. Yes. So uh, for, uh, uh, so for the spec, uh, uh, there's a problem with the uh, uh, the um, the uh, what it called uh, signing signing raw capability. So. Uh, um, so you can scroll down to the, uh, the request for generate signatures. This one? This. Uh, yes, you just go to, uh, yeah, go, scrolling down to the request, Jason. Uh, yes, this one. So uh, as you can see in the request, it takes a payload. That, that's the raw payload. That is basically for encoded payload uh, to be signed. Yeah. Uh, but we found that, uh, for example, in the GoCozy library, uh, we cannot take a um, a, a payload. Uh, uh, we only accept the, the digestible payload. Um. 
So basically, uh, when the Go Cozy library calls this uh, January signature request, uh, the Go Cozy library can only provide a digest of the payload. Uh, we, uh, the Cozy library cannot uh, provide the, the, the raw payload of the, uh, the, the things to sign. Okay, I think we had some, let me, I think I had a discussion with Kim on this. One of the intent around this was hashing, um, like hashing is one of the operations that is, uh, I, I forget the terminology here. Sorry, I'm blanking out. Uh, like a is covered within FIPS compliance. So if you had a plugin or a HSM, et cetera, basically some, some remote system, right? You're, you're offloading here. So that covered both the signing and signing, including hashing. You're offloading all of it. But if hashing was done on the notation side, then, and, and we are using the Golang crypto, the kind of the base version of it, which is not FIPS compliant, then it, it kind of makes it inflexible where you want to rely on a plugin which provides FIPS compliance. Uh, yeah, then uh, that was we, that was one of the reason we put yeah. hashing on the other side of this contract instead of on the notation side. Does that make sense? Uh, yes, but uh, the point is here. Yeah, uh, um, um, if we cannot modify the spec here, then we need to modify the Go Cozy library. Hi, <laughs> Roy. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, no, I mean, let, let's discuss about it. That, that, that was the motivation for this. Uh, so if we change that, what, what that will do is for somebody who wants to do FIPS compliance, they won't be able to do it unless they go and change the, say, I, I don't know, they'll have to use a yeah, different, they, they, they'll yeah, have they to build, support. they'll have to build notation with a Golang FIPS certified uh, branch or something the and then use it. Right, so, but the changes for the GoLang compiler to make it FIPS compliant were unblocked by Red Hat. So we should be giving that in. So do we have an issue still? I, sorry, could you repeat that? As in, I don't understand the current state of like so the GoLang FIPS compliance. The GoLang changes to make it FIPS compliant was being held up by a guy in Red Hat. And he has since moved on. So that roadblock is no longer there. So Microsoft has the, the approval of the community to push back the FIPS uh, changes into the main Golang branch. But what is the timeline of that? That, that? that change can take time, right? I think that was already supposed to have happened, period. I can, I'll confirm that tomorrow for you, Melinda, but I think that's already happened. Okay. Yeah, that... If if that is the case, then then we could make changes here, or like again, we could that that's that's kind of one of the reasons we have the hashing on the other side of this contract. Yeah. Uh, yes. So uh, I will send a PR uh, this week to uh, update this uh, plugin spec. Okay. Uh, uh, another. Wanna, Shiva, let's uh, let's wait till. Uh, Roy provides the details because if it's not, then we then basically it blocks the path for FIPS compliance. Or we can have more discussion on how to make this plugin work in two modes, etc. That like it'll be basically you don't 
what we don't want is if notation Golang and notation cannot provide TRIPS compliance, we should unblock anybody from implementing it through a plugin. Uh, uh, for those people, they, they always can uh, implement the, the envelope level plugin. Sorry, come again. I'm getting I mean, distracted by my daughter. Yeah. So, so we two uh, we have two levels of plugin, right? The first one is the the raw one, and the, the second one is the envelope. So, uh, I think they can always uh, implement a envelope level one. Uh, the, 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 uh, theoretically, yes. I think practically, what it means is, say you have a KMS service, right, which is FIPS compliance. Somebody can write a plugin that directly integrates with that KMS. The KMS does hashing on the server side, and you're all good. Hey, wait, wait um, a second. Uh, I don't think we have a KMS that accepts the raw payload. They only accept the uh, the digest of the payload, right? For example, for uh, for Azure Key Vault, we only accept the uh, the digest of the payload. Uh, what about the AWS KMS? KMS has. Uh, in the contract, you can specify whether it is raw or digested. Uh, so if it is raw, it will do the digesting on the server side. So I, I don't know about others, but uh, AWS KMS, at least as an example, gives you that flexibility of doing the hashing on the server side to some particular length of payload. Anyways, let's, uh, I think I, um, I, I have some question. more details on the. Yeah, I have the question out, so let's see what the answer comes back. Okay. All right, sounds good. Um, Shiva, I found the thing that I was searching for. Give me a second. I'll put it in the chat. You could you open that link in the chat? Uh, yes. Yes, I can open it. Uh, okay. Uh, yes, uh, this one. I didn't go through it in detail. Yeah, no, but, um, no, no. yeah, but basically this this is the thing we're doing in the cozy branch right now. <laughs> so what is the I mean we, we thought that some of the refactoring that we did in notation core go would help integrate cozy more easily. Yeah. But but seems like due to uh can you open the thoughts on refactoring that, that one? Uh, maybe that has more details. Sorry, which one? The, the proposal, thoughts on refactor signature provider to support COSI. Yep. I'll go through this in detail, but uh, Shiva, can you like, can you summarize? Uh, 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 can we summarize that in the next meeting because this documentation needs to be updated? Okay, that sounds good. We can cover this in the next meeting. Yeah. And this was for this is for notation core go. Okay, all right. Yeah, I didn't have anything else. Uh, can we go back to the plugin spec again? <laughs> yeah, sure. Okay, sure. Yeah. Uh, so uh, can you go to the response of the uh, generous signature? Yeah. This one? Yeah, uh, the, the response part. Yes. So as you can see here, uh, the response returns a signature and its certificate chain. So uh, I have a question here that is mm -hmm. why we 
uh, bind the scientific chain to the response of the general signature. Uh, should it, should it, this scientific chain be returned in the describe key or not? So, why is per request? That's, that's a valid question. Uh, I've had similar debates with Pratesh. Um, there is some discussion to be had here. Uh, he had the same concern around certificate chain being written in the response, whereas certificate chain should be fairly stable. There is there is one case where certificate chain uh, could be linked with signature, where like you have some rotation taking place, like the the provider of this API handles some rotation, uh, but it could as well be returned in the describe if the if every time it is doing describe call yes uh, so, does this not work with uh, the azure keyword api uh no i mean i mean uh actually this kind of request does not match the api of the goal of building uh assigner like um um okay just let me see yeah uh, I mean, I mean, uh, from the library, we can always cache the uh, or, or or hook the uh, certificate chain through the assigning request. But uh, uh, it's too hacky, and uh, I think the certificate chain per request is too redundant. <laughs> so uh, we can we can move data. it to the we can move it to the describe. I'm open to it. I think we yeah. should probably validate it with a few key providers, KMS providers, API, and see what fits well. Um, if required, we can make it more flexible where it is provided by either one of those, even that would be fine. Uh, but I'm, I'm open to this. Uh, this has been, like at least I've had a discussion with, with Ritesh. Uh, he had similar concerns around the certificate chain being part of this instead of the hard uh, describe call. Yes, uh, and for key rotation, uh, if we, uh, if someone really wanted to do key rotation, then uh, uh, they should have a different key name, and uh, that says to rotate the entire key instead of just uh, from the uh, from the re uh, response of the general key, uh, because usually when we do a key rotation, the uh, the other metadata of the uh, key information in the uh, describe key will also change, right? Including yeah, it will change. Like the key ID yeah. or other things. So the key ID, it, it depends. So here, I think, I think the interesting part is like, it depends on how different providers implement that API. The key ID can be a logical key ID. Yeah. And you can have actual, you could, you could have rotatable keys behind that logical key ID. So it can happen that for a customer end user, it's the same key ID, but you have some key rotation policies on that key and it automatically rotates periodically, for example. And then your certificate chain also changes periodically, transparently. So, but I'm open to this. Do you, do you wanna submit a PR for this? Uh, yes, uh, uh, yes, I, I will update that. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm also curious for the Azure keyword uh, does the sign or the describe gives you the certificate chain? Uh, so, E, can you open the link uh, that I paste in the chat window? Sure. Uh, so, that's the API, how the address will sign things. So, if we go to uh, yes, it's going down a bit. <laughs> the request body, yeah. Uh, I think we do, uh, as you can see, the, uh, the, re the request body only has the LG, the algorithm, and the value. So if, if you're scrolling down to the, uh, to the examples, yeah. So uh, basically, as you can see, the first one is the algorithm and the second one is the digest of the uh, payload. Okay. 
and uh, and and that's it. <laughs> uh, if you want to get the uh, certificate of the uh, the signing key, uh, then we need to uh, have another call to the uh, to the AKB. Huh. So, like get key, something like that. Yes, get something like get key. Yeah. Okay. Um, we can change the yeah. We can move the certificate chain to the describe. I think if we see some other types of, so it will be a response parameter on the describe. It will be in the describe response. But if we see other providers where they don't provide it in the describe, but provide it as part of sign, we can make changes. Then we can make the describe response optional and we can yeah yeah we can make it such that throughout this overall interaction you get a certificate change somehow either through one of the apis to start with we can move it to the describe i'm good with that okay thanks uh i'm done on my side <laughs> thank you and uh, anything else no, I think that's it. We're done. Hey, oh, you, good. hey, you could you summarize the uh, meeting notes from today? I was doing something on the side, so I didn't do all of it. I followed along, but I don't know what are the big takeaways from this meeting. Okay, uh, yeah, I can summarize and add it to the, I, I remember there is a notes error. Yeah, I, yeah. I can do that later. Yeah. Okay. No worries. Yeah. To me, it was all Q&A. I don't know what we can include it, but it was good Q&A. Okay, thanks. <laughs> okay, so, bye-bye. So just, uh, if, just a final kind of shout out for the mm -hmm. alpha 3 release. We have, we're down to five items in the list of which uh, I think they're all tied to Protection's PRs minus one register unit test. So, can we um, open that list? We can finish and, this. Can we go through that list quick? Yeah. Um, I don't. If someone else can uh, pull it up on the board, I, I'm not spot easily. Okay. Um, there, it's our planning, it's just our planning board, but it's uh, it's right there in the all table open right at the very top. There's five things sitting there. There's Two issues, signing API implementation, implementation, verification, plug spec, and you got two PRs uh, okay. that are both there from Protection. So, so, so I think is, right, it seems, yeah. 36, 52, 53, I'm going through those uh, PRs. 53 will require either Kim or Shiva's review as well. Um, Hmm. And the ones that are in the list the are ones. notation, yeah, notation go 85. Uh, there's notation core go full 16. Uh, those are the two that are there. And then the two issues I believe are associated with those two PRs to close them. Yeah, I can, uh, let me share link of the other, the PR. Um, uh, 101. Has, uh, okay. Yeah, 101. Okay. Yeah, I'll 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 tag it real quick to the milestones so that it's tracked there or seen there. Um, yep. I've, I've, Kim is tagged on that, but I'm not sure if he will have bandwidth. I'll also tag Shiva on this one on the verification plugin. Okay. Yeah, I, I think we should just target try and release uh, by the end of this week uh, with wherever we are. So, um, yeah. Cool. Sounds good. Yep. Thank you. For Thanks, folks. Thanks. Thank you. Thank Bye. you. Bye.